Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to Barbecue with Bert. So today we're gonna do what's synonymous with the barbecue, burgers. So I'm gonna teach you guys a couple of things here to make your burger the next level and make you the Q king. Uh, so a couple things we got here, a few basic ingredients. We're gonna start with some ground beef. It's best to use something a little on the fattier side. So usually people use ground chuck, uh, anything lean doesn't tend to stick together and it doesn't have a lot of flavor. So you want to aim somewhere around like a 15 to 20 percent fat percentage. So that's why chuck is optimal for you. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can add in bacon. Bacon's going to have good flavor, good spats, and it's going to make everything better. Uh, so we're going to make ourselves some bacon cheeseburgers here, put a little bit of our homemade barbecue sauce on it, and get this guy ready for the queue. So the first ingredients you guys are going to need is you're going to need your ground beef. And then you need one egg, some cheese slices, some bacon, steak seasoning, and our homemade barbecue sauce. First, got to have a beer with your burgers. So while this guy's getting ready, what we're going to do is we're going to take our bowl of ground beef so that we can mix everything in it. And I'm going to crack the egg into it, and then I'm going to add my seasoning. So the reason why I don't want to add too many ingredients to it is because I find if you make your burger too complex, either your ingredients end up ruining the taste of the meat. Perfect. So the first thing, steak seasoning. You don't want to go crazy because too much salt will affect a lot of people's taste buds, but you still want to get some good seasoning in there. sauce. Now if you guys have been following along you know exactly how to make this. All right then I'm going to cut up the bacon. So if you lay all your pieces together you can cut through it real easy you don't have to do each piece at a time. Always test your bacon ahead of time. So when I cut this up, I want to make sure that my chunks aren't too big because otherwise they'll just fall out. But you don't want them too small. You'll never notice they're there. Bacon's all cut up. Now we're going to dump that in. Now the reason why we do this is because in that way all the flavor and the fats are going to mix in with your burger itself instead of just putting a slice of bacon on after and then it's either going to get burnt, fall off, cause a grease fire, or you're going to take one bite of that burger and pull that whole piece right out and you don't get bacon with the rest of your burger. So next up, you want to take your cheese and do the same thing you did with your bacon. Maybe a little bit smaller. So again, you could put your cheese on top of the burger if you want. I prefer to put it in. That way every single bite is going to have cheese in it, not just on top. So we're going a lot smaller on that guy. Going probably about an eighth of an inch. All right, pretty simple. Five ingredients into your burger. You're going to mix it all up with your hands. If you're not comfortable getting your hands all covered in meat, you can use tongs, you can use spoons, forks put on gloves, but I find the best way to do it is just get down and dirty. So you want to make sure you get that grill mixed in because the last thing you want to do is have one burger that's really flavorful and the other ones don't have any ingredients in them. So predominantly with burgers, if you have a good fat mix in it, you're going to be able to bind them together. You don't need to add breadcrumbs like a meatball or a meatloaf because the fat itself holds them together. Now, Unlike steak or roast that you want to have at room temperature before you cook, you want to keep your burgers chilled or at least cold in the fridge before you put them onto the barbecue. This is because it'll hold the shape a little bit better and they won't fall apart on top of the grill. Alright guys, now we're going to make the burgers. So what you want to do is you want to make a patty. I like pressing them by hand. A lot of people like to use a clam or a burger press. I find the problem with that is they either make them too thin or you're just making them uh, a flat burger. You're going to get as much flavor. It's always better to take your patty and you want to have a little bit of the crust on the outside. 
because that's what's going to get that nice crunch and hold all that moisture and that flavor in. You're going to make your patty good to go. And then once you put it on the plate, the trick is you want to put a little bit of olive oil around them. Now I know it seems a bit excessive, but what it does is it helps keep it from sticking to your grill. And the last thing you want to do is put your burger on, go to flip it, and have it all tear apart, especially when you have all this good bacon and cheese inside of it. All right, these burgers are all pressed, ready for the grill. Give it a couple test clicks, and let's put these on. All right, guys, now that the barbecue's all heated up, you want it a medium to high heat. I like starting high, and what you do is you want to sear the one side of the burger for like two minutes, three minutes, and then flip it over and leave it for about five minutes. Eight minutes is probably the max you need on a burger. And just like steak, you don't want to flip it multiple times. I find it makes it tough. That's what makes it rubbery. As well as every time you flip it, you have the chance of losing all the juices out of it. Um, it's never good to press your burgers down on anything. That's what squeezes all that juice out of it. You want to keep all that juice in or you're going to have a dry burger and it tastes like sawdust in a bun and no one likes that. So we're going to get these guys on. One thing that's important to remember, so we've olive oiled already, when you put it down, watch for flare-ups, and then you're gonna put a divot in the center of that burger. What this does is it makes it keep from uh, blowing up like a balloon. It's gonna keep that patty nice and flat so it'll have an even cooking throughout. So, two minutes, high sear, let's go. Now, if you make all your patties around the same size, you know your cooking time is gonna be around the same. And you never want to put your burgers in between the, because it's more iron for it to stick on. Just one row of grill. So, divot in the middle of all these. And delicious. So the one thing you can do is you can either put the grill open like this or you can have the grill with the lid down. It's really preference. Uh, I find if it's a windy day or a rainy day, you want to keep the grill down because you want to keep consistent temperature within the grill. On a day like today where it's very sunny, quite nice, uh, you want to leave that grill open. That way you can keep an eye on it and make sure there's no big flare up. You can get on it right away. So we're nice high heat here. We're searing the one side. We're getting those grill marks on it. Now the problem if you don't sear it before you flip it over is your burger hasn't had a chance to get that nice crust on the one side and it's more tendent to fall apart as you're flipping it over. All right guys, now I've put the buns on the top rack. I've given them a little bit of a grill, a little bit of a toast because I don't want them to be too hard. I like putting them on near the end. Uh, last thing you wanna do is burn the buns. These burgers are all ready to go. We're gonna pull them off the grill. Now be very careful when you take them off. You can use tongs or you can use a flat uh, spatula. Take them off, put them on a plate, and you wanna let them rest for about three to five minutes. The problem a lot of people have is they just put them in a bun right away and they start eating them. Now you need to let it sit. You're cooking it for eight minutes. You need to make sure it sits, the juices settle, and you're not gonna bite into a smoking hot burger and let all those juices run out right away onto your burger and make your bun soaking wet. All right, let's take these guys off. Let's have some dinner.